Discord. Widen this up so things are covered. And it looks like it's just the two of us. That's fine. I'm good with that. Okay. So Tuesday we talked about um, uh, confidence intervals, and this week we're going to talk, and next week we're, and today and next Tuesday we're going to talk about hypothesis testing, and then you know, really pretty much the rest of the, the semester. Um, and it kind of all stems from this idea of the confidence interval. We're trying to estimate where the um, uh, where the population mean or proportion are based upon samples that we may have done uh, in the past. And so this idea says, okay, well, we're going to get an idea of, we're going to say, this is what we think it is. And now we're going to prove it or disprove it. Well, um, we're going to prove that it's wrong or not prove that, uh, pro or un be unable to prove that it's wrong is really what happens. Um, we don't, can never actually prove this thing is true. Um, because it is the population. So until we sample the entire population, it doesn't work. Now, um, what's going to happen in this case here is we are going to have, um, last week we talked about t-intervals as well. So we're going to have z-tests, t-tests. So if we know the population standard deviation, we're going to use a normal distribution and the, the z-test. If we have a mean and we don't know the population standard deviation, then we're going to use a t-test. And then if we have a proportion, we're going to do the one proportion t-test. Tuesday, we're going to do the two sample t's, uh, sample z-test, sample t-test, and two proportion uh, z-tests. So uh, that comes up in the next chapter. So don't use them yet because um, they're not in play. Uh, and we can, so we're going to do three, oops, sorry, we're going to do one, two, and five. Next week, we're going to do three, four, and six. We're still going to use the z-intervals just to test them, uh, just to make sure that they work. And we could technically do the two sample z-interval and two sample t-interval and two proportion uh, z-intervals, um, but they don't actually have you do those next week. Um, but we could and see are they um, in that range. Um, so, and what we're usually testing for with the two samples is are these things zero? Because we're looking to see are they different? Is one bigger than the other? Is one smaller than the other? But usually we're, we're looking at zero as the, the number that we're dealing with. Whereas, uh, so we look and really just care about those two pieces. Whereas this week we're looking to see is it bigger or smaller than this particular number? And if it is, then we're going to use that as our basis and test from there. Um, it's weird that this doesn't have the null and alternative hypotheses. I, I had a question. I think you're on yeah. chapter eight. Is that chapter eight? Or? Yes. I just had a quick question about the homework uh, for last week. Um, sure. I don't understand where you got the, um, like the T8. I couldn't oh, figure out where, okay. where you got that from. I think we're on, are we in chapter eight or chapter nine? We're um, on chapter nine to, today, but last um, okay. Tuesday we were chapter, chapter eight. Oh, so I opened up chapter eight. So that's why I was like, wait, something's wrong. All right. So, uh, so which question on chapter eight did you want me to show you again? Uh, I'm trying to find it. That's fine. I also I sent a message on the through the homework app. Oh, let me open that up. And I can. Um, you sent a bunch of them. <laughs> I know. I know. Sorry. Uh, where did we? Oh, the T8. So yes. what that is is that's the degrees of freedom. And so if they tell us that there's nine samples, the degrees of freedom is one less than that. But that's what I put in, and it kept saying that it was wrong. 
Yeah, so it doesn't like it in this format. It has to be in, I know I know the problem that you're looking at now. Um, no, I did it. I did it when the little formula thing pops up on the side of the screen. That's what I use, but it just kept saying incorrect. Hmm. Uh, right here. And then one of the other questions that I that I asked on the homework um, website, I it it was for the wrong problem. That's why I kept getting the wrong answer. <laughs> okay. Um, so on this one here, you got to make sure that you use the subscript, which is in functions. So yeah. you do T subscript and then eight. So it has to look like that. That's what I did, but it kept coming back wrong hmm. because we have the same. I had nine numbers two and then minus one, so it would right. have been the same. But it, it kept, I don't know, it kept marking it wrong. I didn't want to like. That, um, I can, I, I think I can look at it. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, this isn't that problem. Um. I think I can look at it. Hold on. In if I go to score view, chapter eight. That's you. That's not what I want. Um, I thought there was a way to see the question. Hold on. Here, I think it's this way. Log responses. There. Oh, you have a capital T. Oh my God. Okay. It, it, it's weird how it's picky about the dumb things. That's all. <laughs> okay. okay. That's all it is. Is you, you, they want to use a small lowercase t. That's it. Okay. That's the big difference. That's that's how that one's wrong. You would think that 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 wouldn't be a, a like a major alarm, but it is. It, it's it's really sometimes just that stupid. All right. So let me look at the rest of these. Uh, also, my graph says the number. One of the um, the graphs I put in, I kept putting the wrong, the it was for a different graph, so it, it kept getting it wrong. Okay. And I don't want to use up all my chances because I'm still trying to work through them. Was it this I, one here? Yes, yeah, it's that okay. one. Oh, so you got to look, it's doing a 90% confidence in, interval. You were calculating as if it was a 95% confidence interval. Okay. So that's why those numbers are wrong. Um, why are these numbers wrong? That might be for a different a different oh, problem. Yeah, these might be from a different problem. The the yeah. two point two six because they're like way off. So yeah. Something yeah. Or like they should have been twenty two. You know, point no, I think it was for a different. It's for a different problem that okay. has the same exact graph, and I got mixed up. Okay, so yeah, make yeah, make sure you're doing the right problems. But that was that's the reason these are wrong is because it's wanting a ninety percent, and you were answering it as if it was ninety five. Okay. So just be aware of like they're going to change the the uh, the things every once in a while. So just make sure you're you're doing the right one. The, you're doing the right confidence interval. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure you know how to do it. It's like, cause this, this shows, you know, what you you wanted to do, but that's probably all stuff from the previous problem. And so you just carry yes. it over. Yeah. So, all right. Okay. I yes, think, I think you. you understand what you're doing. Um, if you need more, I can, I can add to that part too. Let me just go in and, um, Just in case you, you've done it wrong, grant extension, and um, I'll give you three more. Yes, thank you. On number eight, so that should be good. 
just yeah. in case you've, you've, you've used up your, your quantity. <laughs> there. Okay. So now let's talk about chapter nine. Yeah, that looks better. I'm like, why? I'm like, why aren't I seeing the right problems? And that's why I was looking at the wrong chapter. It's amazing how that works. So the idea that they want to first get into your head is there's a whole bunch of these. It's the same question over and over again. Um, they want you to just basically set up the null and alternative hypotheses. And the thing you need to remember is that the null. The null is always going to have an equal sign. Whether it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or equal to, it's always going to have an equal sign. And then weirdly, some books, like I was helping a student today, they only put the equal sign in, in, in the null hypothesis. And then you just deal with the alternative as being something else. So it's really like different books will show different things. Uh, but in this book, it's either going to be you know greater than or equal to, equal to, less than or equal to. So one of those three options has to be in the null and then the alternative is going to be the other thing a lot of times they give you the claim which is the alternative and then you have to then use that to and then figure out the null from there because but they're, they're just going to be opposites um, but those are going to be the three things that have to go in the, the null the alternative You're going to have less than, not equal to, and greater than. So they're going to match up with the opposite things. So those are the three things that can be in the alternative. Um, and it's always going to be that whether it's a mute, whether it's a mean or, or a proportion, those things are going to be there. And that's all they're really testing you on this part here. Long one. Close that. Is can you pick this out? The other things you have to look at or think about the the English of this um, is means equals um, at most means uh, less than or equal to at least greater than or equal to. Of uh, so here they don't have a, a an other thing, so they're just saying that they get drunk each month. So it is, it's you know it, that's an equal sign. So they're not asking about less than or greater than in these cases. Um, so you just kind of have to read through them and figure out which things are, you know you're going to have. And then is it a percent, which means it's a proportion, or is it a mean, which is mean? So those are the things you have to look for is you know when you're doing problem one is really deciding whether they're they're you know less than or equal to whether I have a proportion and you know so if you have a, if you have a proportion that's going to get rid of half of the answers because half of them have means and half of them have proportions and so you get rid of half of them and then you look at the rest of it and figure out okay well which thing am I going to do from there so that's kind of how you do that whole first question um, the next one here talks about um, type one, and then the next one is type two error. So type one error is alpha. This is the thing that we're testing against. Um, and they're usually going to tell you what it is. They're going to say this is the chance of um, uh, rejecting the null hypothesis when it is um, one is rejecting the hypothesis when it's uh, true, and the other is not rejecting it when it's false. So it's doing the wrong thing. And um, so here we have uh, statistics instructor believes that fewer than 20% of students um, attended opening um, the midnight opening show of the Harry Potter movie. Um, So here, the type one error is that they um, that it, this is true because we have fewer than and less than. So 
that those things are the same when it actually it's the opposite. So, and this is going to change for you guys. You're going to, some of you are going to have more than, some of you are going to have at least, some of you are going to have at most. So this will change, but it's going to be in this range. So these things here, the fewer than is going to be the same as fewer than. If this is at most, then again, it's going to be, uh, you know, here we have this one here. So they're all there. Um, 20% when in fact it is 20%. That seems like an odd one. That should be is not probably. Um, but so you're going to have to like figure out from this word here which one is going to match up to this. So if this is the this is the alternative, and we're attending it and assuming that this is true when actually it's not. And type two. Um, I'm assuming this is all going to be the same question because we all they have at least here and it, then that's not red. So, um, so we're going to have less than. So this is the opposite. We uh, we, we um, fail to reject when we should have. So uh, that's that's what a type two error is. Um, in the rest of these, I believe we actually get to do hypothesis testing. Yes, yes. So I'll show you um, a mean and I'll show you a proportion um, and then you can kind of go from there. Um, so when we are doing this one here as a mean, we have the population standard deviation. Um, Somewhere in here. Oh yeah, right here. We have the population standard deviation. So it doesn't matter what they tell us about the sample. We don't care. We know the population standard deviation is at 2.1. So that tells me we're going to do a z test. And we have stats. So make sure you highlight stats. And then you just put in the information. So this the, the population standard deviation is 2.1. Oops, we're looking for our mean first. Our mean is 19. That's what we're testing against. Our population standard deviation is 2.1. The sample standard deviation is 18.1. The sample size is 40. And from now, we, we really have to care about what is the alternative. All right. And so here it says, we want to believe it is at least 19. So at least it means it greater than or equal to. So that's why it's this. And then part B is going to ask us what's the alternative. This is important because we needed to solve this one. And so you make sure that the right one is highlighted and click enter to make sure it's the one selected. So I want less, I want less than, so it's less than. And then I go to calculate and it gives me my answers. Here is my test statistic. Here is my p-value. They ask you what x bar means. What is the um, distribution? We'll get to that in a second. Here is your test statistic. So what is it? Did I do a z test or a t test? What was my number? Make sure you put the negative in if you have to put a negative in. What was the p-value? Which is right here. And then what does it mean? It means this is the probability of getting this information if the null hypothesis was true. So we have a really small chance of that. Okay, we have less than 1% um, chance of, of this happening. So because of that, we reject the null hypothesis. We compare, oh no, hold on, I'll skip this for a second. We, our alpha is right here, they tell us it's 0.05. Every one of these is gonna be 0.05, so. Um, we then compare the p-value to the alpha. If alpha is bigger than the p-value or the p-value is smaller than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. We have sufficient evidence to believe that the null hypothesis is false. All right. 
So we're rejecting it because of this. And there is sufficient evidence to conclude that um, the null hypothesis was false, whatever the null hypothesis might be. So going back in here, because this is normal, we put in the mean and the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So the standard deviation was 2.1 divided by the square root of the square root of 40. And that's where they get this number from. Okay. Um, I'll show you a proportion so you, you can remember how to get to this number as well. But so it's just standard deviation divided by square root of n. This is just the mean that we're testing. This one here, which graph is it going to be? Well, because it's our null, our alternative is less than, we're going to have stuff on this side. So the only one that has the p-value in the right place is this one. So that's why it's that one. Um, if we were doing greater than, we would have this. If we had not equal to, we would have this graph here. So it's going to be one of these three graphs, depending upon which is our alternative. And then lastly, it asks us to do a 95% confidence level. And the reason we do that is because we can see that the number 19.1 is not in that range. So therefore, it makes sense that that isn't the um, population mean based upon the information that we gathered. So um, this could be wrong, but you know, according to the numbers that we've gathered, uh, it is not in there, so that that's we're 95% confident that it isn't the mean, and therefore uh, we reject the null hypothesis. So it's just kind of a check to see how that worked. The next one is a t distribution with data. So um, I'm going to do that one. I think this is the only t distribution. Go over, go up. Hit clear and enter. We type in our numbers. All right, so we had eight employees. Perfect, good. All right. Now, because we have means and we don't have a population standard deviation listed anywhere in here, that's why we use a t test but we're going to do the rest of it. Um, we're looking to see, is it 10 days? They believe it to be 10 days. So it's equal to 10 or it's not equal to 10. Not equals is usually a really bad test um, because realistically we would want to see, is it above or below 10 if that's what we're giving out and then we could lower it or um, increase it, you know, depending upon what we need to do. Uh, finding out that it's not equal, then we just have to now test to see is it which side is it on? Um, you know, is it less than? Is it greater than 10? So having equal not equal to 10 isn't really a useful test. What does x bar mean? What is the test statistic? Again, lowercase t, not an uppercase t, and then sub. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Sorry. Is this that you? Yep. Yeah. Oh, and Will's here too. Um, so we're just going over questions in chapter eight. Um, there's, I'm only going to show you, there's, I think, six of them. Um, I'll sh go back over it again just um, to make sure I cover everything. But um, there's not a lot for you to do. With, so I just want to make sure you have practices with them, but I, you see how they work. Um, because there are eight people, it's one less than that. So make sure you do the subset and then seven. Do not do this. Okay. All right. Okay. Michelle. 
Yes, make sure it's a lowercase t. Make sure it's a lowercase t. She found that out because she kept testing it over and over and over again and was wondering, why am I getting it wrong? It's because it doesn't like the capital T um, is really the whole thing. Okay. And I have a question for like um, question one from the past um, homework. See, it marks it wrong. Lowercase, it likes. Okay. Yes, Professor, I would like to yes. ask question at the end of this class for, oh, question, sure. for the past homework, question one and the question on the last on one. chapter eight. Um, the last homework we last made it. Yep, yeah. I'll, I'll go over that after we finish these. I'm pretty much almost done this, so I'll okay. definitely go over chapter uh, seven with chapter eight with you. That's fine. All right. Um, so make sure it's a lowercase t, Michelle. Um, and then once we have our data in, it's going to ask us, well, what's our test statistic? So stat, we're going to go to a t test because we have no population standard deviation. And then we have data, so make sure you select the data. Hit enter. It asks us, well, what's the mean that we want to test? We're testing that it's 10. Our information is in list one, and we're doing not equal to. So once that's blinking, make sure, oops, I hit zero. Hit the wrong button. Hit enter. I hit zero for some bizarre reason. And now calculate, and it will do all the math for you. It finds the mean, it finds the standard deviation, which we don't need. Um, they don't ask for it. It gives us our test statistic. It gives us our p-value. And what does it mean? Well, again, uh, if the null hypothesis is true, it's the probability of getting these data points you know, and this information. What is the graph? Because it's not equal, we have stuff on both sides. And then what are we going to do? Well, we have our alpha, which is 0.05. We compare it to our p-value, which is uh, right here. And since 0.41 is bigger than 0.5, we re do not reject the null hypothesis uh, because the alpha is less. And there isn't sufficient evidence to assume that it's different from 10 days. And then, they, again, they ask us to make a confidence level. And we can see that 10 is in this range. So because 10 is in that range, that's why we do not reject the null hypothesis. And I'll leave this one to you. This one here you have to do on your own. Um, it's a proportion you have to decide if it's true or not, uh, if you're going to reject or not reject, so what things are you going to do and why? But to do it, you actually have to do the report. You have to do the test. Here's the uh, alternative or the uh, or null hypothesis, depending upon which thing, and then you'll make do the information. I'm going to do this one. So again, we're going to go to tests, and this is a single proportion z test. So number five, we're testing it against 68%. That's our P. We have uh, 33 out of 44. We're testing at the 0.05 level of significance. And we want to see. So again, they want to see, is it equal to? So they want to see, are, does the um, state colleges, are, is the percent equal to, similar in, to the uh, community colleges? So we have not equal. And we go down to calculate, and we get our information. Oops, make sure this is a 44, because otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. Um, if we have a percent here, we have to then, you know, multiply, find the percentage of this, and then make sure you round it to a whole number. Um, our null and alternatives. 
what does p mean or p prime in this case uh, p prime is the um, sample uh, proportion uh, some books have p hat you'll see this um, You'll see that our, this book uses p prime. They're both uh, instances of the point uh, estimate. They're just the, the uh, sample proportions. So it just depends on the book. Um, like I said, I was tutoring somebody today, and they only used equal signs. They only used they used p hat. So um, you just have to be aware what you know things are being. They're the same, meaning exactly the same. It's just that they use different uh, tools for it. So the p prime follows the normal distribution with the mean equal to the estimated value, which is this. And then to get this, remember it is P times Q divided by N, and then take the square root of it. So in this that case, I had the second answer, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. So I had 0.68, and then this one's one minus 0.68. And I think I had 44 people. And then I take the square root of it. So I have this big ugly thing. I'm just going to move over here. It's it's like I said, it's completely unnecessary to do. Um, it, we don't use it obviously for the calculations, but they want you to have this information for your uh, benefit if you're thinking about doing stuff or doing it by doing something crazy like doing it by hand. So I do this part first, and then I take the square root of it. So second square root, second square root, second answer. And that's where that part comes from. The 0 0.0703. So that's how they got that. I'm going to go back to my tests and my one proportion Z test. It's all set up. I'm just going to come down and hit calculate. So here I have a couple of things. Here's my, my test. I'm testing that it's not equal to 0 0.68. Here's my Z score. Here's my P value. And notice even this calculator does P hat. It's tiny, but it, it's there. Um, is there a bigger one there is not so it has a little p hat on it and that that's its estimate um that's what it found so make sure that you use the right things this acts around at two decimal places excuse me so 0.99 and a five so we have to round this up which means this becomes a 10 which means that's a zero and this becomes a 10 but so that becomes a zero and we get a one. So we get 1.00 from that. The P value is this number. Again, um, okay, in this case here, this choose file, put whatever you want. I don't correct it. I don't think it does. It might, I'm not sure. Uh, put whatever picture you makes you happy. Uh, nobody's going to see it. So just grab a file and put it up there. Make just whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, then what are you going to do? Your, here's your alpha is 0.05. We don't reject because the alpha is smaller than the p-value. And therefore, we don't have enough uh, evidence to um, reject. And again, we do a confidence level. So remember, these are in stat tests. We have our Z interval, our T interval, 
and our one proportion z interval. So you're going to do for part i, you're going to do either um, 7, 8, or a, depending upon which type of test you did. So they're going to match the same type of test. So, <coughs> excuse me. So those are all the little pieces. I think really I only left you one problem, um, maybe two to do. I mean, I know you left you problem one. Um, oh, no, this is, no. Um, nope, did that one. So I think I just left you problem one, which was really kind of deciding all of the uh, – um, null and alternatives. There may have been a, another Z test um, or a T test uh, or a Z test. So, um, but, and then I know there's one proportion test here, um, which I left you to do. So that's kind of how all of those things are done. I know you said um, some of you, you had a question in the previous week. So let me open that up. Which uh, question was it? Um, the question is like question one. Oh, question one, okay. Yeah, like, um, yep, yep, okay. All right, so okay. when we're doing this, make sure we're, we have to just put in all the information. That's the first part. You know, you're gonna get your sample mean, your known standard deviation and your survey size. Those are all the pieces that are asking for here. Okay. Um, what does X and X bar mean? Remember X is just the change of a single thing. X bar is the average of all of the um, single pieces, all the single vari uh, variables that were totaled. Uh, because this is a normal distribution, we know the population standard deviation. Uh, we're going to follow the normal curve where we have our mean being X bar and our standard deviation divided by the square root of N. So we're going to take the standard deviation divided by the square root of 200. That's going to give us this. And then why? Well, because we knew the population standard deviation. Then it's going to ask us to create a um, Z interval. So a confidence interval, which is number seven here. We have statistics. Our mean was, our standard deviation is six. So just put in the numbers that they give you. It'll do all the math. Don't use this number here. Use this number here. Yes, sir. Like um, it's from the homework, the homework question one, um, homework seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then make sure you look to see what it is. So this is 0.9. All right and then calculate, and it's going to give you your range, which you're also going to go here. And then this is whatever the confidence level that they ask you about. This here is whatever's left divided by two, because we have error on both sides. And then the error bound is just taking these two numbers, subtracting them and divide by two. Or you can take this number here and subtract off the mean and you would find the error bound as well. Um, but so that's how those work. You said problem seven. Ah, so in this case here, we have proportions. I'm going to do the first one and then you can have the rest of them. So these have to be whole numbers when we're dealing with doing them. a one proportion Z interval, because these are the proportions. Now we have um, 255 Asian people, and then 71% of them were happy about um, Latinos. So 
255 times 0 0.71, 255 times 0 0.71, gives me 181.05. Well, it has to be a whole number, so 181. Out of 255. And then this was a 95% confidence interval. And that's going to give you these answers here, which aren't exactly the same thing as these because there's rounding issues that happen. And then they ask you, are there overlaps? And you can see that, yes, this is the lowest number here is 0.74. The lowest number here is 0.765. So there's overlap here. The lowest number here is 0.65. The highest number here is 0.71, which is bigger than this, but smaller than this. So it only overlaps here. And then what does it mean? <laughs> well, it means that Latinos might be below blacks or above whites. The 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 um, population proportion might those might switch around. Latinos it could become Latino white black or white black Latino, depending, uh, because there was overlap in these. But what it doesn't mean is that because white and black never overlap, those two will never switch. This is definitely bigger than this one. We don't know how much, it could be pretty close. It could be huge. Um, it could be, you know, like the, what's this, less than 3% difference. It could be more, almost 24% difference. So there's a big range that it could be, but this value is higher than this value. We're, we're pretty sure. And that's what it means when there, there's no overlap in those groups. Does that help? So that's the biggest thing is make sure that you get whole numbers okay. for your your three groups. Okay. When you're going to do the multiplication, there's not going to they're not going to come out perfect. Okay. Um, there is a question from um, the, um, um homework seven. There's a question yeah. here which says um find a um I don't percentile of thirty something like that. Yeah. Homework seven question one. Um, chapter seven. Yes. Oh, this one. OK. Um, yeah. Question one, something like that. No, not this one. OK, yeah, this mean. Yeah. Right here. Some of uh, find the there. probability and the different. The, the Yes, 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 exactly. Yeah. OK, exactly. so the, um, the graph is going to be this one here because well, in my case, what happens is you have to take uh, and find out what M is equal to. And M is equal to one over the mean here. So one divided by 0.88 comes out to be That's not right. Oh, 1.136. Okay. That's why I, I can't read. I missed that one. So we take our M and divide it by 1. That's going to tell us where it crosses the Y axis. And so between these two that have the uh, between, it's not this one because this is crossing at almost 1.4, whereas this one's crossing at one point, you know, less than 1.2. So somewhere but bigger than one, but less than 1.2. So that, that's why it's this one here versus this one here. Um, but you just take this number and do one over that, and you'll find out where it crosses the y-axis. That's, that's how you do that part. Yeah, you like get, um, like this, this, the, the, the correct. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's what. Um, yes. You're okay. Right. Yep. Yep. And then to get this part, did you already get this part here? Yep. Okay. 
But that's how you find the graph is just that you divide. Um, you find I, out what I, M is I, equal to. Um, no, I've not yet got this part. Um, it's not a graph like the part up there. This um this range within this and this between this and this um I don't know how to solve this. Okay, so to solve that part. We have to plug this in to our calculator. So C here is the lower number, D is the higher number. So I have E and m is equal to 1 over the mean which in this case is 1 over 0.88 and i can just do a little of this multi i'm going to like these here I'm, this is you know 0.71 over 1, and this is 1 over 0.88, so I can just kind of squish them together. I get 0.71 over 0.88. And the other one is 0 0.96 over 0.88. Okay. And then to put it in the calculator, Right. So we have the e to the power is right here above this natural log, the second mm -hmm. natural log, negative 0 0.71 divided by 0 0.88. And then I have to use the right arrow to get back down. Uh, so do the minus. Mm -hmm. Second ln negative 0 0.96 divided by point 88 enter and I get my value here which is right there so that's how you do it okay like I uh, yeah I understood now my problem was like um the e I was thinking like yes yeah. how I'm gonna do with this e so that's the problem you see now I got it <laughs> yeah okay yeah, so that that's where the e is right there Okay, problem. It's right above the natural log. Pretty. It's not that too difficult, anyway. Yeah, no, it's it's simple once you know how to do it. Yeah, but it's a lot like like you have to take to to get used to knowing where E is and how to do stuff yeah, with it. You have to take yeah. pre-calculus. So, yeah. um, that's it. Like. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you. Uh, it helps. It helps. Michelle, are you good on that one? I don't know if Michelle. Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. I know. I know you had a, You asked me to give you an extension. I was just making sure that one you were good on that one. Okay. Yes. Um, can you go through um the last one for um chapter seven? There's one last also. One here. Sure. Sound like I see sound like sigma x something like that the stuff oh okay so what that means is you're trying to find the sum of the uh stuff where is right here so sigma x is just the opposite of the x of x bar so sigma x just means the sum of all the x's oh oh, oh so yeah, what you yeah. do is here's your uh sum here's your your I mean x bar you just take these numbers and multiply them by how many things there were so in this case it's 55 you just take these numbers here and multiply them by 55 and you'll get those values mm, okay and then, then um, this this mean how do you got this mean please 
how do I how do I get this mean here? The 17? Yep, this means this uh, I mean this so, x bar. That's what I'm saying. This so, x bar. So to get the x bar, we just we found the average, which is um we take these two numbers and subtract them and divide by two. Uh, we 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 add them and divide by two. Okay. Um, I'm also having problems with that number two. Yep. With with the last one on on chapter seven. Okay. So uh, when we have a uniform distribution, we have a box. And I had ten and twenty four. So to find the mean, I just take the average of those two things. So I get 34 divided by 2, which is 17. That's how you find the mean. To get the standard deviation, It's the top, the big number minus the small number squared divided by 12 and then take the square root. <laughs> it's just a weird formula that um, they like, have. Um, yes, yes. Um, the square root is for the 12 also, the root. Yes. Yep. You take, so you, I'm going to have 24 minus 10. squared divided by 12 and then take the square root so i get uh, 14 squared over 12 square root okay so 14 squared divided by 12 i get that and then i take the square root of it And I get the 4.04, oh. which is what they're looking for here. And then to get this, we then divide by the square root of n. So divided by the square root of 55. That's how I got this number. And then to get this number, I just multiply it by 55. Oh, okay. That's where that one comes from. This one I multiply. And the last one, the last one down, uh, um, the last one. And um, then to do this, now we're just doing the, um, we're just finding the um, area under the curve. We're just finding our distribution. We're just doing our normal CDF with these numbers. So we go from our lower bound. Uh, we want more than 1,000 pages. So this is 1,000 to infinity and beyond with our mean of 935 and our standard deviation of 29.972. And we find that there is, you know, this is the probability of getting value of more than 1,000 pages. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. And then the last one asks goes back to the original part. Why is it unlikely that the uh, average length of pages would be 12? Well, we can look and we can see. All right. Well, the median is the mean is 17, and the standard deviation is 0.5. So 12 is five less than is 10 standard deviations away. So um, it's really, um, really tiny. 
there's also a question i don't know if number one the last one given something like yeah. a big figure ten thousand something like that i don't know if that question is, is like um in number one the last question in number one something like that last question number one um... oh no not there no um um i think that question okay yeah yeah i think this area yeah um am I here that? okay so again we're talking about the sum of the x's so we have to go back to get the our information which is i need i need help on that one too okay. yes we got one down yeah. so we have our mean uh, we have our mean and standard deviation from the sums and then if we want to find between Again, we're going to do normal CDF. But these are our these are our bounds, 1400 and 1550. With a mean of 13, sorry, 1500. So are you using CDF on the calculator? Yeah. Are you I, okay? CDF, right? Yes. Always normal okay. CDF. Okay. So you just use these as your lower and upper bounds. So whenever you're doing between, those are your bounds. And then you just put your mean and standard deviations in. And when you paste and enter, you'll get your, your values. I, I didn't get, like, how do you go um, there on the calculator? OK, uh, second vars. OK. Because we want to go to district. I wish I, I wish my calculator was. I wish I had the black uh, screen because the because it shows up much better <laughs> than on the gray yeah. one, you know. So, um, but it's distribution, which is right above the vars. Yeah, no problem. I got it. And then we want to do normal CDF or inverse normal CDF um, mm -hmm. for these. So. Like if they ask us, um, yeah, percentile, then we just plug in invert. We go to inverse norm, where we have 0.1. Let me try that again. Inverse norm, 0.1. And then we have our mean and our standard deviations, whatever they might be. Here we had 60. And 14 divided by 5. Or we could put in the decimal if we wanted to. And that's how we get our er the number that's going to give us that area. Okay. 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 So, you, did you need an extension on that on chapter seven? Because I know, um, I think it was due yesterday, or did I already give you one? Yeah, no. Give me any extension. I didn't get any extension on that. Um, because it was due yesterday, so you're probably gonna need one. Let me just do that. I did. There you go. Just so I know it gets that, that way, because it may lock you out. So I don't. I don't want you to be locked out of it. So there you go. Uh, All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Will you good? Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm good. Uh, I was gonna ask if I could actually get an extension on uh, chapter seven. Also, no, no. How dare you ask me that? <laughs> All right, let's find you. Um, Phelps. Chapter seven. 
chapter seven. Thank you. Welcome. And don't forget, um, I moved the date, uh, the due date on test two. That's the wrong button. It's due on the 30th. Okay. So that's next Thursday. Gotcha. So okay. I gave you, because I had it on the 26th, but since I'm, we're not having class, like there's no meeting on the 30th. Um, but that, so I gave you four extra days to do the test. So I gave you class time to take the test. So if you're like, oh, I don't have time to do it, you have now, you know, time that you would have been spending here doing it. So um, okay. now you have that. So I told people, Tuesday, but not everybody was here. So um, I just want, I want those of you who are here to make sure I tell you um, that way you're, you're aware as opposed to the people who, you know, don't show up and, you know, will freak out and then realize that they didn't have to. Um, but so, yeah, so you now have four extra days. Cool. Yay, me. I'm awesome. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And then also the week after that, we are not here at all because that's the 4th of July week. So we are all off that week. Um, okay. And there, I, there's not even, I mean, I mean, I guess you can work on chapters, you know, uh, 10, <laughs> you know, during that time period, you know, but you have plenty of time to work on it. Um, it's not due until, you know, the Monday afterwards anyway. And then when we get back, we do chapter 12 and then 11. Because chapter 12 is on the final project chapters 11 and 13 aren't so i wanted to make sure you have that before um you do the other stuff and thank michelle because she noticed that i hadn't unlocked uh, opened up the test the, the final i usually do the first day so i don't have a problem with that um i don't know why it was not open um so uh if you do think oh i'm gonna need to do this uh work on the first part first because that's chapter two and uh, then the next part is chapter 10, and then the next part is chapter 12. So, you know, if you get the first part out of the way, if you're like, oh, gee, I don't know if I'll need to do this, you get the first part done and out of the way, you're like, okay, well, I didn't need to do it, but it's the hardest, longest part to do. So you might as well, you know, like, oh, if you didn't need to do it, do you, I guess you, you know, wasted a couple of hours, but if you do need to do it, you've saved yourself having to figure out how to get it done between, you know, here and here. So, <laughs> you know, between like the 21st of August and the, the 21st of July and the 1st of August, you have a few more, you have a whole week in here that you could easily work on it and get it done. And feel free to talk to each other about it and go, Hey, you know, you want to pair up and, and do this. I don't care. Like, you know, the, Three of you want to figure out a way to, I, you may even be able to come in and do this yourselves. I don't know. Um, like hop in. I don't know if you could do the share content, but you might be able to, um, if I'm not here, I, I don't know. Um, but feel free to try it out. Uh, and then, um, so that gives you that time and it is, it is now open. If you go to weekly work at the very bottom of the thing and now it says final project. You just click on it, and here's the data and the, the stuff that you have to do. Um, and then um, yeah, that's all. I'm getting rid of that. All I, I see that. is the uh, peer uh, peer review form. Um, when I let me make this available. I don't know why, again, why it says make unavailable. Yeah, when I click on final project, it just says the peer uh, form, review form. Um, make the assignment available. Submit. There. Now you should be able to. Now can you see it? You hit refresh. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it was set up as a group project. That's why. 
and I hadn't assigned anybody to groups. So um, that 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 would be why. <laughs> I've changed the the rules of it. I, I used to make it uh, have have it be a group project and everybody had to do it. Now I've decided only students who have uh, you know who need to do it can have you know have to do it. And so, um, but again, if you guys want to work together and just submit it individually. I'm not going to have a problem with that. So um, that's no skin off my nose. I don't, I just want you to learn. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to kill you. I just want you to learn something. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, that's everything I got there. Uh, everybody seemed to be good. Um, I answered your, your questions, correct, Michelle. So let me move this to answered. Uh, moved to answered. We found out all the problems somewhere down here at the bottom. Where is the move to move to answer? Move to answer. Okay, so I've answered all those. Um, we figured out the problems with that stuff. Um, lowercase t, not an uppercase t. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it, like I said, it's silly things. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It, usually it's not you. It, it's the computer is dumb. Um, like they well, shouldn't I have so, you. Make... I was so worried about, you know, using up the three chances. I'm like, no, I know this is right. I don't know what's going on. Well, remember on homework, you have 10 chances. <laughs> oh, 10. I keep forgetting. Tests, you have three. Homework, you have 10 because I want you to get it right. <laughs> so don't worry. Like, But in homework, like I said, if, if you're like, I did this and I'm – there used to be a wrong answer in stuff. Like one of the questions just had a wrong answer. And we would do it and everybody would do it and we'd do it in class and they'd be like, why are we getting this wrong? I said, because the answer is wrong. I said, there's. N I've looked at the answer. The answer they give you is wrong. Here's the answer they give you. Just take it, put it in there. You all know how to do it. It's just they just calculated it wrong. So um, because of that, uh, that that was one of the reasons I gave people all kinds of chances. So I'm like, you know what? It's really easy to type a number in backwards. It's you know really easy to hit subtract when you were supposed to hit add. You know, like stupid things just happen. You know, you have cap locks on, so it makes the T's capital and you don't pay attention. You know, anything is possible, you know. So, like, there's no reason for there to need for it need to need to be in subscript, you know, for the degrees of freedom. Yes, I understand it. When we write it on paper, it goes that way. But when we type it, we don't. We don't do subscript. We just type the numbers out because it's just easier. So, like, I don't know why it doesn't accept that as a, as a thing, but it doesn't. So, um So that's everything I got. Um, I will see you everybody on Tuesday. Um, have a great weekend. Unless there's more questions. No, good night. Thank you. All right, you have a great night. Sally, you good? Yes, I'm good. Thank you. All right, excellent. You have a great night. Will, you're good? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop the recording.